Hello everyone, my name is Dark and we are playing some ARK Mobile. Today I'm going to show you guys how to beat the dungeons, what to bring, what to expect, how to prepare, everything you need to know. Let's go! Alright guys, so first step, what to bring. Alright, let's talk about what you need to bring into the dungeon. Now obviously what you bring will depend on what's in the dungeon. So we're going to base this off not knowing what to expect in the dungeon. Basically as if we don't have a map already. Um, so the first thing you absolutely need is a melee weapon. I use a sword. You can use a pike. doesn't have to be a sword. But you need either a pike or a sword. Um, decent damage. Obviously the higher the damage the better. And now this sword specifically is very decent damage for a medium difficulty server which is what I'm on but I've done dungeons before with swords that are in the 200s for their damage it's it's not impossible it's still just as simple now the next thing you need is food um, so I always like to bring meat cooked meat of course the reason being is it also heals you when you eat it a lot of people say bring flowers or mushrooms a lot of them say flowers I think because they're so lightweight let's be real nothing's really that heavy you can get into the dungeon without using you know more than 200 weight total um, so meat is a really good option because it also heals you now you can't have totally full food in order for it to heal you if you're full when you eat it it won't heal you you have to still be hungry in it to fill up your food bar um, so I like to keep my um, food stat at like halfway you don't want to eat everything before you go into the dungeon you want to keep it about half full so that you actually heal when you eat and you can use that while you're in the rooms next thing is you need water of course I like to bring a total of three canteens when I don't know what's in the dungeon already. If it looks like it's going to be super easy and I've seen the map, I might bring only one or, or not one. I'll probably only bring two. Um, if it looks like it's going to be a really long dungeon with lots of torpor, torpor inducing creatures, then I might bring four. Um, but you definitely need water to counteract the stimulants, dehydrating you, and just in general. Which brings me to the next point, bring a stack of stimulants. Just bring a stack. They're not that heavy. Now the next thing I want to talk about is a compo. Um, you should have at least a compo or a pump shotgun. Honestly, you should bring both if you don't know what's already in the dungeon. Um, the compo is better for creatures like Arthropleura, like Titan Boas. Um, creatures that take a lot of damage when they get headshots. And it's easy to hit with the headshots with the bow. And where you need to constantly be running. And the reason I bring up when you need to constantly be running is because if you're using a pump shotgun, you have to reload. And the reloading animation slows you down and takes a bit of time. And sometimes when it's a surprising time to reload because the game just does it, uh, sometimes it just does it when you have three bullets left, you'll just reload it when you start running. Um, but when it does that, you need to make sure that you know, you're prepared for it and the compo doesn't have that happen. So a lot of times with those creatures where you need to be running around the room, the compo is better. But it's also a preference. If you really love the pump shotgun and you're used to it, stick to it. There's nothing wrong with that. And now, in my preference, I do like the pump shotgun for the larger creatures or the really meaty creatures. Um, so I like to use the pump shotgun. I also like the pump shotgun for bosses because they're usually bigger. Um, the pump shotgun will deal more damage overall in most cases. Now, I do want to talk about ammo. You'll see a lot of people in the official Arc Mobile Discord. And when you see images, they bring like 300, 400 ammo of both shotgun shells and metal arrows. And you don't need that. You need like 150 ammo of one, maybe 200 ammo of the other. Depends on the boss, too. Um, if you know you're going to be... If it's a random boss, that's what you should have. 150, 200. I would go 200 shotgun shells. But honestly, 350 total ammo between your ranged weapons is plenty. It's more than enough. I've done dungeons before with less than 200 total ammo. It's, it's not that necessary to have that much ammo. Next thing, you need medvers. That's how you heal. You need to have them. I suggest 60 when you don't know what's in the dungeon. You might need more than that. If you find that there's a lot of really heavy damage dealing creatures in there, you might need less. You might do some dungeons and only use less than 10 total medvers. You'd be surprised. And now one thing I do really want to highlight for you and make sure you're aware of, the medvers are not an instant heal. They do not heal you instantly as soon as you drink them it heals you over the course of five seconds so usually when i get hit i like to drink two or three of them at a time um if i get hit for more damage then you know if, it, if i lose a quarter health in one hit or a couple hits i might drink three four maybe even five of them because because i kind of spam them a little bit with my finger um 
but you don't need to drink a whole bunch at once, but it's also not instant health, so be aware that it takes five seconds for that one med brew to fully heal you. And now this is super important, guys, if you use soups. If you drink the Enduro soup, the med brews will not work while that soup is active. So my suggestion is don't touch soups. I don't actually bring any soups into the dungeon. I don't use any soups. Um, the only one I could see someone using is vocal chili because that increases your movement speed by 25 um, for the course of the soup. But it's not necessary. You don't have to pump your other stats and lose your movement speed for the dungeons. You know, just for the sake of the other stats and then use vocal chili to offset that. You can do that. You don't need it. And the same thought though goes for the other soups as well. You just, you don't need them. They're not that important. Now next thing is the armor. Do not be fooled by the idea that Ascendant Armor is just automatically better than everything else. Sometimes you can find Mastercraft, Journeyman, Apprentice Armor Blueprints that are honestly way better than the Ascendant Armor. And the reason is not necessarily the armor value and the durability, it's the cost of it. So when you're talking about dungeons, one of the biggest, most important things is your risk versus your reward. If you're bringing in all the top of the line armor and you bring in three sets of all these really good armor and it costs you 5k metal to make all of it along with some polymer because let's say you brought some riot gear too, you're going to be in a lot of trouble when you end up dying at a lava trap or a wall trap because of the lag. It, it is not possible to be a 100% success, be 100% successful at the dungeon because there's just too many potential things that can happen that are outside of your control and that's the lag that's a cap rope grabbing you but dragging you out of the room and glitching you out of out of the dungeon it's not likely to happen but it happens and that's just that's just the nature of it so the goal is to only bring what you need now the trick is when you first enter a dungeon you don't know what's in there you want to make sure it's better to be over prepared than under prepared but you don't want to be too over prepared because of that risk reward now I suggest bringing in three armor sets. As you can see, my armor is a little different. We have a couple different blueprints that we were using. Um, so I brought some cheap pairs of some of these and then I also brought some better ones. We have a tribe of 10 people. We have lots of metal, lots of resources. So we have these really strong armor you know, pieces with really high durability. If you're a solo player, you might not have access to that many resources and that good of armor blueprints. You don't need them though. I used to run dungeons with three armor sets each with 500 durability, nothing too crazy. It is totally doable. Now for my stats, I like to keep everything pretty balanced. Um, as you can see, my health is at 300. I've got the standard stamina, oxygen, food, water. I don't put any extra stat points into that other than the initial two stat points since it's a higher increase than all future points. Um, my melee is at 224. I've got a weight of 415, movement speeds at 170. Personally, I like having that extra weight for outside of the dungeons. I use a lot of weight just because of my playing style in general. I do a lot of stuff on foot. Um, I've played a lot of solo with this character. The melee, I like to have over 200. It just does better damage with the melee weapons. And then the movement speed, 170. You should have movement speed, 150 plus. Do not go less than 150. Um, weight should be 320 plus, I suggest. I don't suggest going below that for the dungeons. Anyways though, that's pretty much what you need to bring and what stats you need. So now, let's go ahead and enter it. I'm going to be using this tech teleporter to gain access. You can use an obelisk as well. Obviously, if you use an obelisk, you should probably put a sleeping bag down. Alright, so let's go ahead and enter. Now this week's dungeon, guys, I want to be clear, the dungeon that I'm doing for this video, it's a very easy dungeon. It's not that hard. The map's already out. But for the sake of just showing you in general, you know, this is just the one that is active this week and the one that I'll use. So I'm going to go ahead and just take out the map, figure out which direction based off memory from when I looked at the map. By the way, guys, the map is posted usually within the first day on the official Arc Mobile Discord. It's not something that's made by the developers. It's made by the community. Um, there's one specific member that started doing the maps and made them really clear, concise, and detailed. Uh, her name is As We Build on Discord. You're welcome to check it out. On my personal Discord that I just recently set up for my YouTube channel, um, which I will put the link in the description, I will be posting that map usually probably the afternoon or evening of each Tuesday, um, so before the end of the day with what the map is, and that way you guys have access to it if you want to join my Discord. 
and if you look so we are at the first room this is super important actually guys so so listen to this in the dungeons you can't actually attack other players this happens to be an ally of mine on the server that i'm on so this he's already an ally but even if he wasn't an ally we wouldn't be able to attack each other as you can see he has a i'm assuming a friend it could be just a third random person but i'm assuming it's friend in that room doing the room and he is waiting for his friend to finish and the reason he's waiting is because the more people that go into a mob room at the same time the harder that room is so a lot of times they'll double up triple up even four times the amount of normal creatures that would be in the mob room will be in there when more people are inside so if he were to run in there and fight with his friend there'd be twice as many creatures if i were to run in two there'd be three times as many creatures and when you're talking about these mob rooms the creatures are already strong enough to try to make it you know somewhat difficult so if you add in more people it just makes it harder so common courtesy is if you see the room being done don't run in wait for the person to finish and when they finish wait for them to run around the different hallways and halls around the room to gather the chests because if they finish they leave you run in and they run in after you because they're going out to the next hallway then all of a sudden they're going to interrupt your fighting and now you've got twice as many creatures again they've got to complete it twice um, and it's just going to make it harder so common courtesy if someone's already in a mob room just wait be patient wait for them to finish um, when you've got the all clear go for it and now anyways though since it's obvious he's waiting too i'm going to go ahead and cut the video here and continue it after i get in and all right so they have just finished i'm going to go ahead and salute them and then i will enter the room now this room is a trike room and a rhino room um, so I think I'm gonna end up having to sort it because it's half speed if it was regular speed I can run around and shoot them with a shotgun um, I think I'm gonna start off by shooting them and don't forget guys when you're doing a room This is my first time doing this room You know don't be scared to try something and if it looks like you should change just change to the other weapon um, My focus is gonna be those rhinos first Like I did the reason being is rhinos charge up they do a lot more damage the more you do these mob rooms the better you'll get at them you'll start to get the hang of what um, each what each creature is like you know rhinos have this charge attack and right, let me use the sword um, but anyways rhinos have a charge attack you know they do more damage out the gate and in general as you can see <laughs> needed to take some med bruise there and don't be scared to use the sword either um, swords are actually really good for creatures like this because you can kill them pretty quickly um, you know what though, I think I'm actually going to try to pump shock on the rhinos first and then just sword the trikes because the rhinos do a lot more damage when they get up close to me. Um, Alright, let's kill, oh, I have to reload. Let's go ahead and sword this guy for the rest of it. And seriously guys, the swords and the pikes, they do a lot of damage and a lot of these creatures do not do as much damage as you think they will. So when you can, use your melee weapon, because then you don't waste ammo, you kill them pretty quickly. If that just means you take a couple med brews, then so be it. Um, so don't be scared of using the sword and the pike and just tanking the damage a little bit. Alright. Ah, oh, shoot. Alright, we're going to use the sword again for this rhino. And now one thing actually I haven't said yet is when you are... Um, especially using melee weapons like swords and pikes for creatures like these do not stand by the walls um, one of the common glitches with with dungeons is when the creatures will hit you hard enough and knock you back past the wall itself to where you end up glitching out of the dungeon and it's impossible to get back and you pretty much just have to starve and die um, and you lose all your gear so really try to avoid standing by the walls when you're fighting in these mob rooms um, now aside from that when you're running around in between the rooms make sure to get any chest that you can Don't bother with traps that you don't need to get past only do the traps you need to do um, I'm going to go ahead though and skip ahead uh, To the next mob room and I will see you there And all right, so I believe the next room is a Sarko and Capro Yes, it is and temperature increasing by the way guys with these temperature rooms don't um, don't panic with them. You know, most of the time it won't actually affect you. You might just have to drink some of your canteen water or eat some food, you know, in the middle of the fight. But it's really not that big of a deal. Worst case scenario, 
quickly go into your amber shop and buy the thick skin. It's like 15 amber. Anyways, a room like this is pretty straightforward. You just want to use your melee weapon. Um, I'm actually trying to get the implants off the capros because I want to get a couple uh, males and females at 150 for breeding. But if I wasn't, I would just keep swinging my sword because it would harvest the dead bodies after I kill them. I'm trying not to do that with a capro, so I'm being a little more cautious with the sword. But just swing your sword. You'll kill all these guys pretty easily. None of these guys do that much damage. The most dangerous thing in this room is the capros running up and grabbing you and dragging you out of the room because the jump drags you past the wall. That's the most dangerous thing is a glitch. It's, it really is. They won't actually do enough damage themselves to kill you as long as you have armor on. And you should be able to kill them fairly quickly with a sword or a pike. And now, actually, now that I think about it, um, leave me a comment if you guys think that I should start making some short, like, probably less than five minute videos just on specific types of mob rooms. So, how to beat Sarkros and Capros in the dungeon. How to beat Arthropleura mob room in the dungeon how to beat Therasinazor room in the dungeon. Something like that. Each video would probably be about five minutes or less. It shouldn't take that long because it's one single mob room and it's just explaining how to do it. Um, but anyways, leave me a comment. Let me know if you think that's a good idea if you want me to do that. Um, if so, I'll start working on something, put something together. It might take a little bit of time, but I'll at least start working on it. Um, which, by the way, guys, if you have a Discord account, join the Discord server. Um, I've got a few different tabs on there. One being video suggestions. You can chat with me directly. You can leave me suggestions, you can post some cool screenshots, some jokes, um, it's a good time. Anyways, the next two mob rooms I believe in this dungeon are Prolovia and a giant, um, a juggernaut dodo with onic minions I think? Um, which are both super simple rooms of Prolovia, you just have to run up to it so it jumps out at you. It'll stun you but you just start swinging its, your sword and you'll kill it pretty quick. The dodo and onic. Don't go for the onyx, go for the dodo. You kill the dodo, the onyx won't respawn, then you kill the onyx. Pretty straightforward, um, but those are just specific two mob rooms in this dungeon. Now before I do finish this up, I do want to give you two more tips. Make sure you keep an eye on your weight. It's not uncommon to clear out enough mob rooms with a sword or a pike and harvest up all sorts of meat that will weigh you down. So just go ahead and drop all that meat. If you're overburdened on your weight too much, it will slow down your movement speed. Now the second tip I have for you is when you are running around the dungeon and you're looking at your map, if you jump while you're running, your map will periodically pop up in front of your face, just like that, and that way you can kind of get an idea of where you're going and you don't have to stop every two seconds to look at your map and see where you're at. And we are now entering the Perlovia room. I'm going to go ahead and call it for the video here though. If you did enjoy the content, if it helped you out at all whatsoever, if you liked it, please don't forget to hit the like button comment on the video and subscribe if you haven't already also even if you are a subscriber if you haven't checked out the discord click the link in the description check it out i'm sure you'll enjoy it you can chat me directly um just like i said before i've got some other different text chats i'll have a music um section eventually i'll probably have a voice chat at some point in the future um but it'll be a lot of fun so um but yeah if you enjoy the content don't forget to like comment and subscribe um, make sure you stay tuned for my future PvP video, my next one in my PvP series. Um, and, uh, you know, have a good day. Hope you enjoyed it. My name is Dark, and I will see you next time.